Hi again, the Elizabeth Scala here from Living Sublimely Well, back at you with another video pertaining to healing after elbow surgery. So today's video may or may not apply to you, kind of depends where you live. Um, I've shared in many videos, and I'm back in this setting, because this is where we did the loving kindness practice, where we rub lotion and talk to ourselves. Um, in the mirror, and I'll link that video to this one so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I've talked about a, a couple of these topics in past videos, and this um, leads to this. Related to pain. So my surgeon, and I'm sure many surgeons out there have um, this best practice that they follow, was unable to prescribe me pain medications after a certain amount of time had lapsed from the surgery date. He said to me, I'm the surgeon, this is my scope of practice, I can't help you anymore. <laughs> um, and as I shared again in previous videos, due to the complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS, that I was diagnosed with, I personally did have increased levels of physical pain. So, if you're not having increased levels of physical pain, this may not pertain to you. Um, if pain has not been an affliction of yours after your elbow surgery, great. Um, and secondly, this video may or may not pertain to you, as I said, because of where you live. So, I am currently living in the state of Maryland, and Maryland is a state that um, commissioned medical cannabis uh, so we do have medical cannabis dispensaries here and people are allowed to go to healthcare providers to be certified or granted um, a medical cannabis card that you would then present with your photo ID at the medical cannabis dispensary and you're able to purchase products. So because my surgeon um, was no longer prescribing me pain medication, and actually the interventional pain specialist, when I asked him for pain medication, he said, we don't prescribe those medications here. We only offer um, relief from nerve pain, which is why I was taking the Neurotin, and I talked about that last video, um, and why I got a bunch of nerve blocks in my neck and my arm. That's all he could do. So I was left with a lot of physical pain and really no help from our Western healthcare model, um, conventional medicine, to relieve this pain. Sure, I could take Tylenol and Motrin and Aleve and those types of things, but first of all, I don't like taking a lot of pills. And second of all, I had such an increased pain level that those pills were not working for me. I'd have to take an absorb it, um, a ginormous amount of those medications to um, get the relief that I was seeking. And this is about a year ago. I'm not in that place right now. But if you're having increased levels of pain and you live in a state where there is medical cannabis, you may consider finding a healthcare provider who does do um, an intake appointment and will work with you on your getting approval for a medical cannabis card. If you have questions, if you do live in a state that this happens and you have questions about how to find a medical provider, please let me know. There is a nurses association called the American Cannabis Nurses Association. And the American Cannabis Nurses Association does have a website and I looked at it, I was searching all over it. I know a lot of the nurses um, that are part of that association. I even know the president or past president, I should say. Anyway, um, and on that website, I noticed there was a page or a link or something that said, you know, find a provider in your area. So again, I can hook you up if you need help with accessing someone in your area that can help you through this process. Okay, that being said, so about a year ago, I did myself go through this process. Now, I was nervous because I am a nurse and I was skeptical because I didn't um, want to be, you know, place stereotypes on me because I was getting a cannabis card. Anyway, I went through with it because my husband actually was like, Elizabeth, this is ridiculous. Your arm is hurting. Um, you're in a lot of pain and there's no reason for this. And you've talked about um, 
medical cannabis before because as a nurse um holistic nurse and and who's attended education conferences workshops through the american holistic nurses association um, i've been through lots of talks and listened to lots of workshops and webinars on um, the benefits of medical cannabis so there's lots of research out there that cannabis can help with pain and so i was like you know what let's try so I wanted to talk specifically, and that's why I'm back in this location where we talked about um, loving kindness and talking to our elbow in the mirror and rubbing lotion on the arm and really feeling the scar and all the skin around the arm. I did that, as I shared with you in my previous video, every evening. And the lotion I used was actually a CBD and THC infused balm. So it's actually um, a cream that you take a little bit of cream and I would rub it on my arm. Oh, I haven't opened this in like eight months. <laughs> it smells good. Um, that I would take the cream and see, I haven't needed it, but take the cream and it would um, soothe the pain right in the general area. Now, I'm not saying it took it completely away, but it would ease it. Similarly, if you were to put like an icy hot on or something. Um, yes, I brought this to my occupational therapist because I wanted her to read the ingredient list and make sure that none of the ingredients were counterproductive to healing my scar. So Candy, um, my therapist, you know, saw this, read this and said, Elizabeth, this is great. I'm glad you are doing this. Um, and yeah, go ahead and rub it on your arm. So I did that every evening. Another thing, and I don't have this anymore because I mentioned I'm not really using these, um, these aids as much as I needed them in the past. Another thing, and so when I went to the cannabis dispensary, um, there is a dispensary agent that, you know, the person you are buying your products from. But they are all, for the most part, I won't say they all are, but many of them in the place I went. Um, first of all, the first time I went, I had a woman as my dispensary agent and she was younger a little younger than me about my age and i told her what had happened to me how the surgeon wasn't prescribing pain medication how i really really was hurting and how i was having trouble sleeping and she said elizabeth you are in luck because she had had spinal surgery and understood difficulties with pain and difficulties with sleep after surgery so she recommended this um, tincture. It literally was a small jar, and I wish I kept it so I could show you, but a small jar with an eyedropper. So the eyedropper screwed on and screwed off. That's how the jar remained closed. But you would screw the eyedropper open, and then the eyedropper, there was um, like an eyedropper you would use to use eye drops or something. It had, um, it was clear and it had little lines on it because you could see how many mls you know you were pulling up into the eyedropper and you would take this drop and place it right beneath your tongue under your tongue the goal was to not swallow it <laughs> this particular tincture the goal was to let it sit under your tongue and kind of infuse through your um membrane of your tongue and that particular tincture was for pain relief um she talked to me about what was in it, um, how it helped with pain, how to take it, all those sorts of things. And about a year ago, when I was finally trying to do my activities of daily living, or not even my activities of daily living, but to finally get outside. One weekend, my husband said to me, he looked at me and said, Elizabeth, you can't become a potato. Or, or he said, you're not a potato. Something along the effects of the potato. Just sitting there, like, not being able to get up off my chair, not being able to do the things I loved out in my garden. And so I was like, you know what, you're right. I've got to try a little bit of gardening. And even if the gardening was for just a little two hours with many, many breaks, I wanted to get out there. I wanted to move my body. I wanted to feel productive and I wanted to do something I enjoyed. So I used the tincture under my tongue and I noticed it would help me go through activities with less aches and pains. I actually wound up using the tincture before occupational therapy a lot because again, I was not being prescribed those um, narcotic or opioid pain medicines. And so I'd go to occupational therapy and my arm would be throbbing. So I would use that tincture. 
And finally, the last product was, um, and I need to maybe get some of these because I've been having trouble sleeping again, but these um, RSO tablets. So they were essentially capsules, a pill that, and again, this dispensary agent talked to me about it. She highly recommended it. She said they helped her with sleep. They came in different dosages, so you could start really low. And then if that didn't do anything, you could try a bigger dose. Um, but I would take those pills right before bed and, and just one pill, I shouldn't say pills, right before bed. And oh my goodness, what a restful, restorative um, sleep through the night, good night's sleep. I actually use those. Um, remember, I have another video on sleep and I talked about how I was sleeping in a guest room. I was sleeping apart from my husband um, for a good three or four months before I was able to get back into my own bed. And so the nights that I started back in my own bed, um, I took one of those pills to help me fall asleep because I'm a very light sleeper. I was having physical pain. I had my arm propped up on six different pillows in all these different directions, and my husband tends to snore. So um, yeah, consider if you are running out of options for pain support, um, if you're not being prescribed opioids and narcotics, which is a good thing. We don't want all of us running around taking all these pain pills and becoming addicted to opioids or narcotics. Um, but if you find yourself in a situation where you still have unresolved pain issues and you do live in a state where there is medical cannabis approved, you might consider getting a medical cannabis card and then um, using some of these options to support your pain relief. So I'm sure this video might open up uh, lots of thoughts, lots of questions, lots of concerns or comments. Go ahead and throw those in the box below. Um, as I said, I can certainly help you and I will put links to the American Cannabis Nurses Association as well as the American Holistic Nurses Association. But if you need help um, navigating that stuff and finding someone to support you, well, let me know because I've got lots of connections. All right, thanks for tuning in. Visit me over at my website, elizabethscala.com, and we'll see you next time.